This is the DFW Black History Special, a CBS 11 original. Hello, I'm Robbie Owens. Thank you for joining us. This year's Black History Month theme in the U.S. is the black family, representation, identity, and diversity. With that in mind, for the next half hour, we're going to explore issues facing the black community in North Texas, plus a profile of difference makers, those who have achieved so much while breaking down barriers. So we start appropriately with a look back. Steve Pickett shows us one man's effort to preserve Dallas's black history with a tour of remembrance. I would like for people to know is that, first of all, we were here. In a small East Dallas office, George Keaton Jr. works to preserve Dallas's history by reminding and reinforcing the interwoven ties of black people to that history, including his own lineage. Behind me is my grandfather, his mother, and his older brother. They came to Texas in around 1858. Remembering black Dallas is Keaton's community education gift a roving classroom of sorts, teaching the stories of downtown's majestic theater, where blacks were required to sit in the balcony only, or visiting the city's thriving uptown section, which quietly mentions those refurbished houses sit on the same racially segregated blocks from the 20s and 30s. This Dallas is black Dallas, from Deep Ellum to Lake Highlands and beyond. The communities of freed slaves can still be found at a high school downtown, a century-old church across the street, and a YMCA building for blacks only that still stands today. We do uh, tours around Dallas. Matter of fact, we have one scheduled for every weekend of this month. And we, we go, we, one is called the Freedman Towns Tour. Remembering Black Dallas is really about ensuring we don't forget Dallas's black footprint. If you learn and understand what happened in Dallas's black history, the younger people of the new generation, black and white, will be, be able to understand how to confront those um, adversities when they show up. In Dallas, Steve Pickett, CBS 11 News. Dallas ISD has a new initiative that reflects their student population. More than 90 percent of the total student body is minority. Teachers now are using major ideas and themes from a partnership with groups to shape a curriculum that's more beneficial to the entire student population. One Dallas ISD staffer hopes that this approach will help students understand that it's okay to talk about race. A recent report by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security issuing a warning about domestic violent extremists, especially white supremacists. As a result, the Dallas Holocaust and Human Rights Museum has refreshed its exhibit on the fight for civil rights in the South. Jack Fink spoke with a North Texas man who survived a deadly bombing of a black church, an event now featured at the exhibit. It just brings back memories of that day. That day was September 15, 1963. The KKK bombed the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama on a busy Sunday morning. I was in the basement of the church. Once I smelled the pungent odor of gunpowder, I realized the church had been bombed. Dale Long, who lives in Garland now, was just 11 years old at the time, and he and his nine-year-old brother, Kenneth, escaped. And I noticed that some were bleeding, many were crying. The blast killed four young girls, ages 11 to 14. So I was about three rooms down from where the young ladies were. All were his friends, lost far too soon. But I stood there and watched the pallbearers bring three coffins out of that church and load them into the hearse. <laughs> now, nearly 60 years later, the Dallas Holocaust and Human Rights Museum is featuring this deadly bombing as part of its special exhibit of the fight for civil rights in the South. This photo we stood by is one Long said he's seen many times before, but not enlarged like this. And you noticed someone. I'm thinking that would be me right here. Long shared his story with the museum's president and CEO, Mary Pat Higgins. To hear that he was in that church worshiping his God on the day that a bomb was planted with the intent on murdering people is this really chilling. 
On display are the coat, purse, and shoes of one of the young victims, Denise McNair, and a cement brick fragment from the church. Both Long and Higgins say this exhibit is even more important after a recent U.S. Department of Homeland Security report found white supremacists pose the most lethal and persistent threat to the country. I've seen the ultimate in what race relations does and what discrimination and segregation and hatred does. And certainly I wouldn't want anybody to have to relive that era. The bombing ultimately led to the passage of the Civil Rights Act, Voting Rights Act, and Fair Housing Act. Long credits Dr. Martin Luther King, who he had seen for the first time in person after he eulogized three of his friends. But we need to start with a place like this, with a space like this, and educate ourselves and then go out and do things for the community. In Dallas, Jack Fink, CBS 11 News. The CBS 11 promotions team is highlighting African Americans making a difference in the community for this generation and generations to come. That includes a father and son who found a unique way to help other families through words and pictures. <laughs> Allison Blakes and I wrote the book Els Miller. I'm Babu Blakes. I'm a scholar MC, co-author of Els Mirror. And then me and my son decided to write a book. The book is about El. He has little problems at school. So Els Mirror is a book about how self-awareness, social awareness, historical awareness all can contribute to your self-esteem and ultimately your self-efficacy. And when he looked in the mail, he saw someone who looked like him, who suffered similar problems as him, who overcame the problem. And that made him realize, if they can overcome my problems, I can too. The message is that the hip-hop generation, if you're thinking about folks like me, born between 1965 and 1984, it's time for us to be clear about our offering to today's generation. I want children to know that they're not alone in this world and people have struggled from the same problems as they have. There's an opportunity to receive great value from exploring and learning about the hundreds and thousands of years of black history, including the thousands of years before people were even called black or required to be black. Black history is our history. Carter G. Woodson is known as the father of black history. In 1926, he started Negro History Week. It expanded in 1976 into what we know today as Black History Month. One of our goals during this program is to start a conversation about race and unity here in North Texas. And let's be honest, it's a tough discussion to start, much less continue over days, months, and years. I found one group already working to make it happen, they're called Dallas Dinner Table. My Bob sure want a job on the back. Books have been written and movies made about James Byrd's 1998 dragging death in Jasper. The horrified leadership Dallas alumni class wanted to make a difference. That effort became known as Dallas Dinner Table. And so we usually get together in small groups of eight to 10 per table, and we have a facilitated conversation about race. Beverly Wright has been board chair since 2002, serving as leader, facilitator, and at one point, a first time diner. It just changed me. It taught me so much about me and the unconscious biases that I had. Wright was born in Dallas, but often traveled with her parents to their hometown in East Texas. And I had some not great memories of how my dad was treated as an adult male that was called boy. And I didn't realize how deeply seated those were until I participated in Dallas Dinner Table because there was a white gentleman in our group that said he was from Nacogdoches. And immediately, without me even thinking about it, all my fences went up and we had conversation over dinner. And he told me that he was 13 years old before he knew that the N-word was not the proper name for black people. And what I started understanding in our conversation is that just like me, he was a kid, he grew up with no um, 
prejudices until someone wrote that on his, his blank slate. The community dinners are free, but require prior registration and are held on the MLK holiday. Wright says the goal is not to rewrite history, but to learn from it through another's perspective. What's his name? And yes, new painful chapters are always being added, like the videotaped murder of George Floyd. And I think to actually see someone begging for their life, calling for their deceased mother, while someone casually kneels on their neck, made a difference. I think now people are having to make a choice. Now they're saying, if I don't do something now, this says very clearly who I am. Like most white people, I think we, we didn't have to think about race until we didn't. Simmons Lettry joined Dallas Dinner Table for the first time last month from the D.C. area, where she's been involved in a similar effort. The virtual conversations this year, an opportunity to set more places at a table loaded with good things. It's a place for healing, um, it's a place for understanding, it's a place for listening, and it's a place for growing. We make it easier for people to come as they are with whatever they can ask the questions they've been nervous about asking in a non-judgmental environment. And that's the only way we're going to really move the needle together. To be able to seek out people who are different from them because it will just make them better people. And would that be your message for perhaps a, a white person who is maybe interested but is afraid they're going to go to this dinner and get attacked? If you're afraid to have those conversations, that's okay. Lots of people are afraid to have those conversations. Um, the scarier thing is when we don't. Right now, Dallas Dinner Table is working with similar groups in other parts of the country to take the effort national, looking to become America's dinner table here soon. An art installation is drawing inspiration from the racial awareness rallying cry of the 1960s, Black is Beautiful. Dallas photographer Yessi Fortuna is celebrating black resilience through pictures. She opened the doors of her studio last June for free portraits. Her work turned into this display. It truly really is just a reminder that black is beautiful. It's not that black is beautiful now, or it wasn't before, or it won't be later. It just is a healthy reminder that it is a life that is worth protecting because it's beautiful. We don't trample things that we believe are beautiful. The display was up during Black History Month at the Dallas Galleria. Music is an important part of many lives, and for a Fort Worth man, it runs in the family. Our CBS 11 promotions team introduces us to an influential African-American, Kiti Young. Hi, I'm Keith Young. I am a father, I am an artist, and a social activist. Art is probably one of the most powerful means of social change and engines of social awareness that we have. Fort Worth and all that I experienced growing up also informs me and my mission to uh, just see progress in what we all kind of casually refer to as the American dream. You know? Won't you help to say? I'm inspired by all of the ordinary people who felt a passion to give their lives and surrender their lives for the benefit of a larger vision. My cornerstone belief is that we, none of us are separate. So uh, in that spirit, it's gonna take all of us to kind of surrender to that higher vision, that higher idea, that, that bigger role that serves not just us, but those around us, you know? So um, honestly, it, it all goes back to community. You know, whatever our social ills can be answered if we tackle them as a community. Black history is our history. The Juanita Craft Civil Rights House honors the first black woman to vote in Dallas and serve on the Dallas City Council. Craft is recognized as one of the major female figures in the modern civil rights movement. Richardson ISD is introducing STEM students to a pilot who not only broke records, but barriers in his industry. Here's Aaron Jones. 
As a young boy, aviation absolutely captivated him. But born in Jamaica and brought up in inner city Miami, he never thought becoming a pilot was obtainable. That is, until he met one at age 15. And I asked him one question. I said, how much money do you make? And after his response, the rest was history. I took an interest in aviation, and little did I know this industry would not only give me a chance to see the world. The whole world. In 2007, at the age of 23, Captain Barrington Irving went on a 97-day journey, flying 30,000 miles. I was able to set a Guinness World Record, becoming the youngest person to fly solo around the world and also the first black man to do it. Guys, today is going to be an amazing day. When he returned, he wanted to find a way to use his passion to inspire young students. Well, let me get my first two. He created the Flying Classroom, which not only exposes them to aviation, but leads them on virtual global expeditions through dozens of STEM projects. This is one of the two engines. One Today, he's teaching Richardson ISD STEM students at the Addison Airport. There's no greater feeling than knowing you've helped to possibly change the trajectory of someone's life. London Heathrow? Yeah. He's making an impact on students like Berkner High School senior Oriolo Soamimo, who, like Irving, took interest in aviation at a young age. Um, when my father took me on the flight to the UK the first time, um, I was really impressed on how the plane worked, and ever since then, aviation has been my major goal. Um, I want to be an aerospace engineer. Captain Irving gives him inspiration. He, he flew around the world, and despite, in spite of his age and his color, he was still able to achieve a lot, and that's really inspiring to me. Um, hopefully, I can live up to what he has done. This is for you. That's what makes awesome. this experience amazing to not only inspire students, but also empower them. Thank you. In Addison, Aaron Jones, CBS 11 News. It is our honor to highlight African Americans making a difference in the community and breaking down barriers. Our CBS 11 promotions team introduces us to Chandler Foreman. Miss Texas, Chandler Foreman. Hello, I am Miss Texas Chandler Foreman. I'm very proud of where I grew up. I'm very proud of everything that made me who I am today. For the first nine years of my life, I did grow up in the inner city of Houston. I'm just happy to actually be here as a representation of what, what true family values, what support really looks like and what it hard work and um, just having a team that supports you. I think that's what really represents Texan values as well, which aligns with my foundation. When I stepped into this journey of competing, of community, of service, I gained a whole new perspective of really what life is about, my purpose, my God-anointed purpose, actually. Growing up, I never saw images looking like me, representing as Miss Texas or Miss America. I didn't see that many visuals that represented, like I said, where I grew up. We all know in this age of body positivity, I come from a family with strong genetics, and that was something that, another thing that I faced to where I've always been, at, I've had an athletic muscular build, and I just knew that Man, my size is not represented often. Being a black woman, being a curvy, authentic black woman, so I knew that it challenged me to bring out every aspect, everything. Like I said, the foundation I grew up on, my real life black heroes, um, the ones that I grew up with, my sister, my mother as well. Every day does go on, but as long as you're better than your yesterday and you are challenging yourself, you're challenging those around you, it has been quite the journey. Black history, it's our history. Fort Worth's Opal Lee is on a crusade to have Juneteenth recognized as a national holiday. At the age of 94, Lee believes Juneteenth can be a holiday that recognizes our freedoms and unifies the nation. Inspiring the next generation, DJ Poison Ivy, whose love of sports and music landed her a coveted gig with the Dallas Mavericks. This is what I love to call the convergence of fate and faith. I literally just knew that I wanted to work in both sports and music somehow, some way. <laughs> it ended up, I ended up manifesting my real dream job. Hi, my name is Ivy Lino, also known as DJ Poison Ivy from the world champion Dallas Mavericks. 
Um, I was born and raised in the great place called Nairobi, Kenya. I am most inspired by um, former President Barack Obama and former First Lady Michelle Obama. And obviously, I share lineage and heritage with the former president. It really all begins with a dream. Whatever you believe, whatever you love, whatever you see yourself doing every single day, and most importantly, whatever vehicle you see yourself using to impact change. As a mother, one of my biggest hopes um, and desires is that I can impart um, on my daughter the importance of a work ethic, the importance of consistency, in who you are, in authenticity. Um, we've lived in a, a very tumultuous past couple of months, but I'm hoping that moving forward, we can continue through our various talents um, to share the message of hope, dreaming, and of course, of love and unity. Black history is our history. The Black Academy of Arts and Letters is a local treasure. Their annual Black Music and the Civil Rights Movement concert is an Emmy Award winning event that's shown on our sister station, TXA 21. Here's a glimpse of this year's performance. to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Whoa, 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 whoa. Put your hands together. This is the 38th concert performed as a tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We hope that this CBS 11 original DFW Black History Special has inspired and challenged you to start those tough conversations now about race and unity and do your part to make North Texas a beacon of light for racial equality. I'm Robbie Owens. Thank you for watching.